Jones, I return to the White House to check in with the second Republican woman and first mom to serve as White House press secretary. A live look at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue here in Washington, where I had the privilege to serve as press secretary for President George W. Bush. Earlier this week, I returned to my old stomping grounds to sit down with the current press secretary, Sarah Sanders. Uh, what is your first news memory, and did it affect any of your education or career choices? The first one that comes to mind would probably be uh, when my dad ran for the U.S. Senate in 1992. I was nine, and he lost. Mm. Um, it was a devastating night for our family, and I remember just the impact. Uh, it certainly gave me a greater appreciation for when you win and versus when you lose. When he decided to run again, did you, as a kid, did you not want him to? You know, at that age, uh, it seemed fun and fascinating. When most kids were going to summer camp, I was doing like the Arkansas Festival Circuit. Oh. And so I thought it was all great. And I loved the campaign aspect from a really early age. And I was excited for him to be Your part dad of that told race. me that you had a desk, like an office, when you were four years old. <laughs> I did. It was actually in his office. Uh, so he had the big like credenza and underneath that bottom part, I would keep all of my own supplies, my, you know, tape and glue and scissors and make wonderful masterpieces, I'm sure. I was the first Republican woman press secretary. Uh, you are the second. We, you are the third woman overall. <laughs> but you are the first working mother to ever have this job. In this job, we, everybody sees you all the time. We know that you're working 24-7. So how do you balance it all? Uh, I think one of the biggest things is the moments that I do have with my kids I have to be really present. Uh, I try to put my phone away and fully focus on the time that I have with them. And I try to block out specific time, uh, whether it's early in the morning. Uh, I think it's a, probably a blessing I have early risers. People always ask what's the hardest thing about your job. For me, it's being away from my family. Right. Uh, the other part is having an incredible partner. My husband is supportive and he puts up with all of this and helps keep you know all of us afloat and i couldn't do it without having him as that support system to get through each day in my book um i wrote that my favorite piece of advice is that choosing to be loved is not a career limiting decision <laughs> and was he your boss right. at some point uh, no, I was actually you, his boss. You were boss. his boss. Okay. I was his boss. I think that some people imagine that if they ever want to have this job, that it's this magical moment and a real Cinderella story and the stars come out and there's a band and it's like everyone is so excited. And that certainly was not my experience. <laughs> there was no band, I can assure you. And for no you, band. you didn't really have any time for a honeymoon. It was just hit the ground running. <laughs> yeah, um, so it all happened within about a four hour period. I loved the deputy job. It was great. I found that as, in the the deputy position, that's when you get to know the commander in chief very well in a little bit more of a relaxed setting possibly. I think any job in the White House is incredible and I've always said if I ever walk into the building and I'm not in awe of being here and being part of it then I've been here too long and it's time to go. Mm -hmm. Thankfully I still feel a sense of reverence every time I step into the building, certainly every time I step into the briefing room and I hope I never lose that. Yeah. I used to say a little prayer of thanks and gratitude every morning as the Marine opened the door. I say, and I also say a little prayer of God help me uh, every day right before walking into that room. So recently in the Atlantic magazine, Glenn Thrush said he thought the administration's apparent tension with the press was overstated. Uh, would you agree? No. <laughs> I, I know Glenn well, but uh, you know I think that uh, there's always going to be tension between whatever administration is in place at that time with the White House press corps. But I do think that there is a heightened tension, uh, certainly between this administration and the press. Uh, you have, hold on, I allowed you to finish. I think you can see that in the coverage. I mean, I've been around press and worked in politics uh, my entire life, and I've never experienced the level of kind of hostility that I think we yeah. see day to day. On the day of the Las Vegas massacre, that was the first day of my new show, The Daily Briefing. And so we were covering your briefing and Ari Fleischer, a former press secretary as well, was on as my guest. And we watched you. The memory of those who displayed the ultimate expression of love in the midst of an unimaginable act of hate will never fade. Showing that emotion was important and it's not always easy to do at the podium. Uh, yeah, you want to, I think, project strength, certainly, um, from an administration standpoint. But I think at that moment, um, the country was broken. 
and I felt like it was an appropriate time, if ever, uh, to show the emotion of that situation. Um, but the biggest thing I wanted to do was talk about the spirit of our country, and uh, I wanted to make sure to communicate that. Like me, you were student body president, and you. But unlike me, <laughs> you come from a political family. Do you think you? ever see yourself running for office? Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, I never like There's to say... There's an opening. I never like to say <laughs> never uh, because it'll come back to bite you. Yeah. Uh, every time I, I think I have a, a perfect plan for my life, uh, God tells me otherwise. And so I never really envisioned sitting here having this conversation right. with you, uh, not even as far back as, you know, maybe two years ago. Mm -hmm. And so um, never say never, but I, I don't think that's part of the master plan for me. Um, but again, right now it's one day at a time and, and trying to do the best I can. Our thanks to Sarah. Up next, two former presidents from two different parties weigh in on the state of politics today. But first, Sarah and I went outside the West Wing for a lightning round, including her most embarrassing moment on the job so far. What time do you wake up? Uh, usually about 5.15. On your own or with an alarm? Uh, with an alarm and usually a child. What is the last thing you read before bed? Uh, usually uh, the last email, work emails of the day. Marine One or Air Force One? Uh, I think Marine One. It's a little bit more special. It's a smaller group, so it's pretty exciting. Coffee? Lots. Your most embarrassing moment as White House Press Secretary so far? Oh, when they had a bring your child to work day. I just brought my middle son, Huck, who's four now, and I'd gone into the Oval to explain to the president he was going to go out and take a picture with all the kids. So I'm in there walking him through. You're going to go out. You're going to take the picture. You'll come back in. And I look up and I see the bushes in the Rose Garden like violently shaking. And then I see a little blonde head pop up. And then I see my son's face peeking into the window of the Oval. And uh, the president's like, there's a little boy in the bushes. And I'm just like, yeah, that's, That'd be mine. that's my son. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America.